you all have your bulletins, I know. Um, I hope those of you on our email list got your study bulletin so you can follow along. If you did not get one, please send an email to secretary at stlukesbillings.org and ask to be put on the email list for the Sunday bulletin and they will get to you. So let's start this nice cool morning with singing together Christ whose glory fills the sky.
upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Friends are so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them were all gone together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by a horn. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give light to my eyes, O Lord. Psalm 13. Please read responsibly with me at the half verse. And those of you following the Book of Common Prayer, you can find the psalm on page 597. How long, O Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will your life forget me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart, day after day? How long shall I have over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him. in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving power. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord most high. Give and life to my eyes, O Lord. The second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 6, 
verses 12 through 23. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal body to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as once you presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let's sing together the Passion of Nets in Galilee.
one of these little ones is the name of the disciple. Truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Slavery, slavery, slavery. It's all around us. And it's nothing new. And it's certainly nothing in the past only. Paul's talking about slavery to a people who have slaves. And we're hearing a lot about slavery in our own days, aren't we? But there's a different kind of slavery than just the human bondage kind, which is terrible and sinful and not, that should not have a place in God's kingdom. Nobody in this room, I'm guessing, and maybe even all of you who aren't in the room with us, has suffered under human bondage. But we do live every day under the slavery of sin. There are lots of kinds of slavery. Like I said, human bondage is one kind, where you force people to do your will without paying them or Human trafficking is a form of slavery. I could go so far as to say factory farms are a form of slavery. Crushing debt is a form of slavery. Holding on to old hurts and prejudices and, and negative opinions, whatever it is the unforgiving stuff that we have a forgiving them. That's a form of slavery. And God knows, as Paul was trying to articulate, God knows that we are capable of being enslaved by sin. But we don't have to be. That's the whole point of Jesus. That's why Jesus came, to set us free from our slavery to sin. Now, our theology scripture tells us that Jesus died on the cross to save us, or because from our sin, to save us from our sin. My glasses are fogged up. I don't think it was a magic thing universes change and all that stuff, I think that we can't really understand. But I think down in the boots on the ground, what Jesus did by the way he faced his the ultimate trial of his life was to say, I'm not going to sin no matter how bad things get. I'm not going to hate. I'm not going to try to stop what's supposed to happen from unfolding by following my own desires. Jesus sets us free, not from sinning, because we keep doing it, but he sets us free from the stain of sin, the shame of sin, the burden of all of the bad choices we ever made. Because we can't carry those around. And so Jesus acknowledges the righteous judge says, yes, you sinned. And yes, that sin. And stop sinning. Doesn't pretend that sin now, now that Jesus died on the cross, sin doesn't matter anymore. It matters very much. But he says, I love you so much, I'm going to set you free from slavery to those burdens that prevent you from becoming and being the person of God wants you to. Now, like 
I'm going to say all of you, maybe I'll say most of you. I keep sinning. And I kind of keep making the same sins over and over. But human nature often gets us to look before we leave or to do things that we know are counter to what God's will is. I've done lots of stuff in my life that was sinful. But what God does for me through Christ is I've been set free from the shame of all the bad decisions that I have ever made. Now that doesn't mean I should say, okay, now that I'm free, I can keep doing that same stuff, because it doesn't matter, but it does matter. Jesus sets us free from our own bondage to sin. We have to speak out and fight against and rail against slavery. And in our own day and age, to recognize our own sinful history in that sense. But we can't just say, well, that was then, this is now, I don't have to do with that. It's part of our collective history in this nation, but throughout the world because it's been going on since the beginning. Some one person trying to subjugate another person for the first person's benefit. That's where the sin comes in. So we have to acknowledge it. And we have to repent of it and say, never again. And don't run with those attitudes in our minds that lead us into sin that make us jump right back into slavery. My senior word in my first parish once said, you know, if you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. <laughs> well, that was pretty good advice. And I think the same thing is with sin. When we find ourselves in sin, we have to stop the sinning, and we know that God will free us from the burden of what we've done. It's up to us to not put, keep putting the burden back on. And over and over and say, okay, I'm burned again, help me, I'm burned again, help me, I'm burned again, help me. You know, at some point, God's going to say, stop getting burned again. That's the slavery to sin, and we don't have to accept it. Jesus has set us free. We have to claim our freedom and then use that freedom in the way God intends. So that slavery can be abolished because we've been set free from our slavery. We have to set those who around us from their set them free from their slavery too. We live in a new world, we're new people, and I say that not just this minute, oh, because of coronavirus. God has given us a new world and gave us even a newer world with Jesus. So, uh, it's up to us to not be slaves, except to God. To submit all of ourselves, our wills, our thoughts, and our very bodies to be a slave to God. Because that's true freedom the only kind of slavery that brings freedom. The rest, sin. So let's stop and be free. Amen. On page five in the worship booklet, uh, uh, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the night. believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God from God, the Father of God, light from God, who was in heaven, and who is 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 in for our lives and for our salvation, he came in our own time. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became in our own time.
following along in the Book of Common Prayer, you can find these prayers on page 383. With all of our hearts and with all of our minds, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nation, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the cities of Billings, Fort Smith, Juliet, Law, Lavina, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widow and orphan, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those on our prayer list, including Bill, Diana, Harmon, Katrina, RJ, Bernie, Anthony, Neil, Gabby, Lisa, Rose, Anthony, Randy, Dolores. And we pray for any others who may care to now name. For yours is the majesty of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. I will be a son, and I will be a blessed son. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Then walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And we're going to sing. Lord Jesus, think on me.
in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable to Christ, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where in Luke and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
where there is danger and the best so love, where there is injury and pardon, where there is discord and unity, where there is doubt and faith, where there is despair and hope, where there is darkness and light, where there is sadness and joy, where there is need and not so much love and peace and soul as to console, to be understood as to understand, to love as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Sure. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you evermore. Amen. Oops. <laughs> Let's go forth in the name of Christ, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah.